Figure it out. Hello, this is Adam Carlick with Flying and Eating. Today, let's go somewhere and do something. And make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Hey guys, it's Adam here. In the previous episode of Flying and Eating, we went out to England again. We were wandering around, we were in Bath for a little bit, then we went off to uh, uh, Wolverhampton. We, of course, had a lot of Indian food. It's been a great old time, but the adventure is not quite over. We have a big video game convention to look forward to, as well as more Indian food. Good morning. It's day. I have no idea, but it doesn't matter. I'm going for a little morning walk here just to get some exercise. Uh, today's adventure, what we're going to be doing is uh, the guy who runs the convention, Revival, his name is Craig. Um, he's going to come pick me up here in Wolverhampton, and we're actually going to drive down to Cardiff. And I realize on a British scale, that's an insane adventure. It's like a two and a half hour drive. For an American, it's like whatever. <laughs> for them, it's a huge deal. So... You know, just putting that out there that to the British people watching, I know, I know, big deal, right? But the reason we're going to um, Cardiff is we're going to go back to Super Tomato, which is a video game store. Also, just kind of spend a little more time in Cardiff. Uh, and then there may or may not be a cameo from someone very surprising, but we'll see, we'll see. So I figured I'd show you guys something about Wolverhampton. If you get out here, this is the train station. Uh, the trains would come in along here. They have little blue trams you can see right there that'll take you into the city. Alternatively, there's cabs here that can take you in. Ubers obviously function here. The bus station is just like a stone's throw that way. So it's all kind of super connected into the city center. So the whole group has arrived in, uh, we're in Cardiff now. We're inside this little market thing, and I've decided to hit this place up. It's called Smack Burger, which is like some sort of Polish burger place. I imagine it's pronounced differently, but uh, getting the Welsh beef. We'll see how that goes. So I want to introduce, while they're eating, this is uh, Craig, who's running the con, and then this is Aaron, who's helping. And while they're in the middle of eating stuff, I'm going to introduce you to what I got, which apparently is a burger. As you said very well, I've never seen a burger in like a cone before. <laughs> uh, but yeah, why not? Let's do it. So the burger was monstrously weird. I've never seen one that came in a cone and required a fork. But I must admit, it was very good actually. <laughs> the beef was the best part. It was an odd combination of ingredients, but I was all for it. So this is Cardiff Castle, which we only got a little bit of a brief stint of footage last time we were here, which is oddly enough like three weeks ago. But as you can see, they have this really cool flag with a dragon on it. This castle is kind of like the definitive touristy thing that you must see if you're in Cardiff. But because we're a bunch of nerds, we're going to not do anything here. We're going to go around that corner where that Hilton is, if you saw the previous episode that had some Cardiff in it. And uh, we're going to go on to Super Tomato, which is a video game store. I know it's like a nice mixture of touristy stuff and video game stuff. So check both channels depending on your interests. Okay, everybody, the Sega Pluto has officially been to Wales. So it's it's been to England and Wales, technically the city of London. It's never been to Scotland or Northern Ireland, though. One day we will fix that. Has been to Gibraltar, though. As a local British person, I can personally assure you that if your Sega Pluto does not find its way to Bermuda, I can assure you that you will be ripped apart by horses in the name of His Majesty. You guys may have noticed an odd sight up in the sky. That is called the sun. We call it uh, the bra. The bra, the big hot light bulb that occasionally shows up. I got it a one day uh, travel visa so that we could all check out make wheat Cardiff. Grow. Yes, make wheat grow. Thank you. Yes. Can you tell me anything about this big clock tower? Uh, it was built in. 1462. Is any part of that true? By Eddie Van Halen. Okay, that sounds about right. And um, the, the British came in once and uh, changed it for a digital one, and they did like it, so they had to change it back about four years ago. I appreciate this completely authentic take on history. Absolutely. Tour books are available for £10 at the reception. So the uh, castle obviously continues around, and uh, one of the few times you'll see the Union flag here, really, they are really very, very much logically so into just kind of portraying the Welsh flag. Uh, we're going to head this way, and over here, if you saw the other brief stint that I was in Cardiff, that's the Hotel Hilton, and there's like a street there with a Cuban restaurant and all that. It's a very, very walkable city, by the way. Um, I, I actually quite enjoy this place. Long shot, mate, but I don't suppose you've got any loose master system manuals. Like, I got a box sitting up back. What are you looking for? There's a few. Oh, oh, the Flash. Um... Ha! Chance would be yeah. a thing. <laughs> That's one of those, that would come home with me if that came in. You mind if I have a look through your math system manuals? Uh, give me two seconds to dig some of them out. I can't dig them all out. No, no, that's alright, that's alright. So we are currently in Cardiff uh, at Super Tomato. We have returned. How are you guys liking this store? It's cool, it's cool. Some really important stuff. No British stuff. Yeah. My crowd yeah. 
thank you for driving us down here so that we could once again do the pilgrimage to Super Tomato. And uh, Tom, it's obviously been a very long time, almost three weeks since I've last seen you, but uh, you're doing well. Yeah, you're filming me after just spilled coffee all Yeah, I know, but, but you got a hoodie to hide it, so... I am hiding yeah. it with a hoodie. Yeah. Underneath is a scruff. <laughs> yeah. Some of it, uh. But I, I do want to give you an extra shout-out in this video, just because so many people in the comments said, you sound like Christian Bale. But then they don't realize Christian Bale's Welsh when they say that, which yeah, is like, well, that makes sense. <laughs> all the people from the UK sound like Christian Bale. Can you guys verify that? No, I don't no, sound nothing don't. like you. <laughs> <laughs> Through the black country, they sound nothing like you. So the whole entourage, we just got out of uh, Super Tomato, so we're heading out, and we have a surprise cameo here. She doesn't notice that she's on camera, but she's right there. Where? Yeah. yeah. Where? Hi, Kelsey. Hi. Why are you in the UK? Uh, to see a baseball game. I mean, I've done dumber, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> so we're basically heading out of Cardiff now. I know we didn't show you a whole lot of Cardiff, but I know you guys haven't been here in years. What did you guys think of your return to Cardiff? I love Wales. Always have done. Lovely yeah? place. Yeah, Cardiff's cool. nice. And you? Yeah, it's good, man. It's good to meet new people as well, meeting your friends who we just did. Yeah. And uh, like I say, getting out for once in a while. Yeah, it's good to go out, have an adventure, have an experience, see new things, and meet your buddies. Get out there, do stuff, everybody. It's fun if you can do it. Good day, afternoon, whatever. Um, not much been going on today. Now it's dinner time. I'm going to go to this place. This is called The Mountain Bar and Grill. It's an Indian restaurant. I thought the name seemed a little inauthentic, but then I read a bunch of the reviews and everybody's like, no, 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 this is the one to do, which is super convenient for me because I'm staying like right there. So, yay. So I'm going to go with my gold standard, which is a matcha paneer. I'm going to mix it with an egg fried rice and then a cheese naan, I think. I think that's the plan. So I just came out of there and I've realized quite a few things. First of all, the food was very good. Um, it wasn't quite as good as that place Spices I went to, but it was very, very good. And like any other time, it probably would have been like one of the best ones ever. So I learned that, how do I say this? I've been in the UK so long now, my assumption was always just, oh, British Indian food is just always gonna be good. I never really thought about like the internal geography of that. Turns out, it's really the Midlands. The Midlands of the UK is all the best stuff. And then the rest of the UK is just kind of not as good at it, but they're very good at it. They're better than we're at, of course. So if you want the truly best Indian experiences, you must go to the Midlands, which is where we are. So like that one was very good. It wasn't as, quite as good as spices, but it was still better than like 98% of the ones I've ever had. I also learned, by the way, uh, you can see all the food we had here. So I had a matcha paneer, I had a uh, cheese naan, and I had egg rice. Um, but I also learned something very important while I was in there. Apparently, there is a Team USA for cricket. Yep, that shocked me. And not only do we exist, the games are hosted in Texas. I had no idea. So in Wolverhampton, there's a bunch of shopping in downtown in the center where I am. There's two malls actually, like right next to each other. It's a little weird to the point where they actually have repeating stores. Uh, one of the stores I enjoy going into is CEX. It's a mixed media store. There's one in this mall down at the end of that. And then literally in the mall next door, there's also CEX. Strange planning, but it's something to do if you're in Wolverhampton, there are malls. So I went out for food and I got these two things that are called jumbos. The one on the left, I think was some sort of beef and whatever jumbo, I don't really remember. The one on the right is definitely a steak one, that much I'm sure of. And then I also got something called a Manchester tart. No idea what that is, uh, it was a two pack obviously. So it's the day before the con, I've made my way over here. Martin over here, you guys remember from earlier, <laughs> he uh, was cool enough to pick me up and we just drove over to check this out. Is this an advertisement for a new Dreamcast game? An original Dreamcast game, ARM, James and Watch. I have no idea what this is, but I guess I will find that out at some point. Um, anyway, so over here, they're going to have this big arcade set up. And then here we have like some uh, retro PCs set up. Some of them are clearly newer, like emulation type of things but then we also have things like the commodore amiga cd32 which is a console looks like we have some original amiga hardware here i have to forgive me i'm not super familiar with amiga hardware we're gonna have dealer tables there's some dealer tables setting up there right now uh, but you get the basic idea 
but around we have various pieces of hardware set up. I'm going to show you some of the consoles though. Some of those are my passion. An IQ player, which is a Chinese kind of official clone of the N64, but usually you just see the controller with the built-in thing. This is like a special thing that allows multiple players. Um, this is an officially licensed Sega Mega Drive or Genesis in mainland China that use like VCD discs. Uh, and then this is the same thing, but without the license. Um, we have the Brazilian portable master system. We have, I believe, the Brazilian Zebo. I think that's where this came out. They claim Mexico. They probably write about that, but they also say Brazil. All I know is this didn't come out in the U.S. Um, Mega Jet, I did a video on this. Virtual Boy, which here is was never released, but it did come out in the U.S. The black version of the Dreamcast, which was a Chinese clone version of the Dreamcast using an official system. This is actually one of my holy grails. The uh, the Phantom. This is a really bizarre machine. It looks like an Atari twenty or sorry seventy eight hundred, but it was effectively licensed sort of by Nintendo for the the NES in Brazil, and it even has clone Sega Genesis controllers, which is very bizarre. Um, a Super Famicom like Hotel Box system, Pioneer Laser Active. Uh, there's Craig. Hi, Craig. You're good. <laughs> um, the Panasonic Q, uh, a new one, Samsung, one of the Samsung models, the Japanese PSX, which is a DVR PS1, SG1002, FM Towns Marty, which is also one of my holy grails, Neo Geo CDZ, Amicom Twin Sharp. Uh, we have, this is an odd one. This is a PlayStation 2 built into a television. This is an official thing, a Sony Bravia model that had a PS2 in it. Only came out in Europe. Amstrad GX 4000. Uh, this is really cool. This is called the Amstrad Mega PC. Amstrad Computer Company did a deal with Sega, and they put a Mega Drive or Genesis cartridge slot on it. Very, very cool. And there's more stuff over here. I'm going to be based over there tomorrow. So you got merch. Things like Amiga shirts and hoodies as well as Commodore shirts and hoodies. Shout out to my buddy Sunshine in my Discord because he probably would crap his pants over that. Okay, so Dave, who knows, but the con is about to start. Um, we're like a few minutes away. There's some people early entrance in here. So far it's been nuts. I've been running around trying to get controllers and different games and testing them here, testing them there, trying to do a little early shopping, picking up those European exclusives that is funny because the only stuff I want is stuff they don't care about because it's like, they all want the same stuff we would want, like good games, but I'm a collector, so I want stuff that is, you know, exclusive or special. But I'm not going to have any reason to buy, like, say, a game, an Xbox game that I could get in North America. You want to find the exclusive games. And usually the exclusives that come out in Europe that we don't get are, like, sports titles and junk like that. So once I finished a lot of those, I'm looking for stuff that's just, like, for systems we didn't get, like the Amiga CD32 or the GX4000, things that are there, like... Why, you must be desperate if that's all you're looking for at this point. <laughs> I am a bad influence. Martin came here being like, oh, I don't really buy stuff anymore. Now he's got this big pile and he's like, I'm thinking about buying other things. I, uh, I have a negative effect. The convention is now in full swing. So we're inside the arcade room, which obviously has a lot of dealer tables and everything. I've already bought way too much stuff because I'm stupid, but uh, it's been a lot of fun. I've also gotten a lot of free stuff from very polite, nice people who are just like, here, take a thing, I'm your fan, which you don't have to do that for the record, but it's obviously very appreciated. Very, very cool. So the convention center is actually at like a, I guess this is some sort of racetrack or something. Uh, and there's a Hilton Inn, uh, but yeah, it's inside there. And so far, it's going really well. Check it out, guys. I signed a, I ruined, more accurately, a copy of Shenmue 2 on the Dreamcast. Thank you very much, Ryan, for letting me ruin a game. <laughs> So something that's really cool about the Sega Pluto is the con here made a book that actually has a section on it. However, the Sega Pluto you're seeing there is not the same one. There were only two of these ever made, and it's always funny because everybody uses photos of the other one. Uh, but yeah, they re refer to it as being unobtainable. However, on page two of this story, there is the white mock-up one, which I've shown in previous videos. This is in Texas. This, however, the shot of the motherboard, is this actual unit, which is very cool. Credit to Ben Heck, of course, who filmed that video, but yeah. I was there at the time. Very neat, very neat. Small convention update. It is, I don't know, like 3 o'clock or something right now. I'm exhausted. Uh, a lot of people have been coming up, talking to me, obviously asking about that, but also... Uh, I see a lot more people in the UK, retro gaming, seem, seem to know me more than the American one, so which is very nice, very honoring. Uh, but yeah, it's exhausting. It's exhausting. Oh, hey, here's Martin again. The guy who talks endlessly until the camera's on. 
that it's like, uh, no, nope. for medieval reasons. <laughs> he just uh, nope. nopes right out of here. Uh, no comment for medieval no, reasons. No comment on camera. He knows never to speak on camera. He's smart. Much smarter than me, who says everything on camera. So, here's the plan. The con has ended for the day. It was a very successful day. I got a lot of stupid things I really did not need to get. Uh, Martin here also got a bunch of stupid things he really didn't need to get, but I'm glad he got them. I'm a bad influence and I'm happy to be one. Uh, now we're going to go be social, hang out with the con heads and stuff, maybe get a drink. I don't know, maybe he'll drink because I don't drink, but you're driving, so you can't really drink that much. Are you going to drink? Nope. He is I'm not going to drink. So we're going to get two, yeah, we're going to get two, uh, waters because we're really cool. And then we're going to go out and get some Indian food because that's the law. Um, but we're going to one very specific place. You guys already saw it. It's a place called Spices. I have to go back there. That was like the best thing I've ever experienced. Yeah, I'm doing it. F*** you. I'm doing it. So we've been in here. You now have been to Spices. And already you can tell, A, that it's fancy, but like they, they, they put this on you, the little thing, like service. So here's, what did you get? Like lamb something? Lamb chops. And uh, what do you got there? Like chicken with lamb. I can't remember the name of it. Very, very nice. So this is how cool this place is. They don't have coconut rice on the menu, but I asked about it, and they're like, yeah, we'll do it. So they made us each a coconut rice, and I ended up getting my uh, customized paneer tikka masala with extra paneer and extra veg and a cheese naan. My favorite thing about this place is, like, even if they don't have it on the menu, they're just like, oh, yeah, just ask and we'll do it. They're really cool about that. <laughs> so we just walked out of Spices. Eight. I thought the food was phenomenal. I had my little customized thing, but I'm more curious what you had to think about this place. Yeah, good food. Um, at some point, I'm going to bring you to Manchester. There's a place that this matches up to. It's one of my favorite restaurants in Manchester. I'd say All good right. food. Yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to it. So you agree with like the vibe, the fact that like the outside's like weird, but then the upstairs is like amazing. Outside is plain. Basic small town, nothing special about the street. You come inside, they've really looked after the place. It's it's, it's a nightclub in there. It's awesome. <laughs> Definitely check out Spices if you're ever in Dudley, England. Worth it. So it's day two at the con. Uh, Martin's already back there. I told you this guy talks constantly, just not on camera. It's actually very amazing. Um, so the con's actually running now. Uh, this is the main room area. Uh, hey, this lovely gentleman picked me up this morning. Appreciate it. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna show you a little bit more over here. There's dealer tables outside, and then in there is the big arcade room full of more dealer tables. Obviously, this is your area with your obscure consoles and things. Pluto set up over there. Yeah, today's been going well. I mean, I only wandered around for a few minutes, and people just started handing me stuff. I already signed something, which is very cool. Which, you know, like, I'm happy to sign stuff, by the way. I take photos. I don't care. I but don't think of me as anything special. I'm just a guy walking around doing a thing. But I appreciate that. Um, that said, having a great time here. This has been an awesome convention, and I would very much hope to come back uh, in the future. And if uh, you know you're ever in this area, and even if I'm not at that one, this is a good con. You should go to it. So I was just gifted this for free. I was eyeing up some just like junk in a PS2 bin, and I was finding this fascinating because this is like a weird pirated, officially released disc that uh, works on the PS2. And I was just like, oh, that's really cool. The guy's like, oh yeah, here, just take it. <laughs> He's like, I'm never gonna be able to sell that. So very, very cool. Thank you. Everybody, look, I ruined a VMU to Darren. <laughs> I usually would write a little message on here, but the VMU doesn't really have a lot of real estate for that kind of thing. <laughs> Everyone, look, I've ruined yet another copy of Shenmue. Well, thank you, George, for allowing me to ruin a copy of Shenmue. Yeah. <laughs> so we're still at the con, and I want to introduce you guys to somebody. Someone who is very influential on this channel, and none of you realize this, and I don't think he does either. This is my buddy Ben, a.k.a. Shen Muso. Do you know why you are influential? Uh, Do you want to take a guess? My awesome beard? Get no, because I did better at that. Well, you know, it's neat no. and tidy. Yeah, well, yeah, you the got a full thing going yeah, on. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, nice. Yeah. Like it. No. This is the individual that is responsible for introducing me to Indian food. Oh! Ah, you didn't know that. That was, yeah. that was no, where I this knew, was going. I knew, that, I, yeah. I knew that I'm the one to introduce him. Yeah, yeah, so... This is a this is old. Like ten years ago, like literally it's twenty twenty four when we're filming this. Twenty fourteen I came out and met him for the first time up in Nottingham. And you were cool enough to let me crash at your place and he was just like, We should get dinner. And I was like, Of course, that makes sense. What are you guys gonna do? Now this is like my first trip there in the UK as an adult, so I didn't know what to expect. I was uh... I was expecting either like the standard pizza or Chinese, which is a very American answer. He goes, Oh we get Chinese or Indian. I was like, Indian. Like, Obviously. Indian, like Americans don't eat Indian. I've never You're heard Britain. No you idea. Indian. Yeah, but Amer so you have to understand in the States, it was like, there's literally an episode of The Simpsons that makes a joke out about going to an Indian restaurant because nobody does that. <laughs> like, it, at least, and that was years ago, of course. And so I was like, Indian. He's like, no, trust me, you've never had Indian? I'm like, okay. So we order Indian, and I'm like, what have I been missing my whole life? 
And then I've been chasing this ghost forever. Of everywhere I go, I'm like Indian food. And I noticed that outside of the UK, it's mostly terrible. Oh. In the US, it's not very good. It's, it's okay. Right. Japan does it well, but it's different. Every country, like Canada does it okay, but most countries suck at it. You guys are on a completely different level here. Well, you know, us and the Indians were like this. I mean, yeah, there's you, a historical yeah, reason you for remember that. The whole, but, uh, yeah, the whole all of history the thing. The whole empire thing. But, yeah. Yeah. But, but basically, so. <laughs> see, see, classy vibes. This is the UK. <laughs> so like it's like, <laughs> we still use them regularly. You actually, can see them in any high the street. The roads are really small here. That's actually just a normal car yeah, now. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, um, yeah. But anyway, so, so, but what I've discovered on this particular trip, because I've been in the UK for like a month now. Wow. Yeah, he didn't even know. He doesn't pay no, attention to anything. But what I've noticed, it's not all of the UK. Because the only time I've ever had bad Indian food in the UK, at least technically, was down in Gibraltar. Right. So, so it's, it's their country, right. technically. Crazy, it was just like mediocre at best. Right. And I was like, so what is the... Okay, so it's just like within the, the, the British Isles, specifically. Uh, and then it was like, well, the Northern Ireland one was good, wasn't as great. And then I started realizing, no, 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 it's not all the UK. It's the Midlands. Oh. And that makes sense, because the Midlands is just full of the highest density of the Indian That's population. That's true, that is true. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. it's where the chicken tikka originated. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, so it all makes sense. Enough. They basically had to make Indian food for white people. They figured it out, and it's all right here where we are. This is the best thing. And so, like, well, Martin just walked away. But uh, last night we went to dinner at a place called Spices. I'm just going to do this oh, to be awkward. Yes. A place called Spices uh, out in Dudley, which might be the best Indian restaurant I've ever been to in my entire life. Spices is amazing. Yeah. 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 Well, we've got a spice in Nottingham. I don't know if it's the same it's thing. A, but it's the word it's all spice. Indian. It's, it's all, all Indian. Yeah. Point is, oh my God. if you're in the UK, obviously you want to get Indian food. But if you want the really good stuff, you go up to the Midlands. And you all for all the videos that I've made complaining about Indian food, it is completely this man's fault. On my just eat, mm. we have uh, my history is basically the same thing over and over again. We have it on speed dial basically. It's called the uh, uh, vegetarian tali meal for two. Look up that vegetarian tali meal. Even if you're not a veggie, this thing is just perfect. I, I will confess, with Indian food, a lot of time I prefer the vegetarian dishes. I love my meat. I, I, I eat meat all the time. But with vegetarian dishes at Indian places and like mm. usually Middle Eastern places, they know what they're doing with vegetables in a way that the rest for of us real, just don't know real. how to do. We're white. We don't know how to cook stuff. <laughs> so, yeah. It's true. It's true. It's we true. invented the Pop-Tart probably. You know, I mean, it's uh, not really on the It's not really a whole. pride thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, like, I, I, I'm happy to take full blame for your introduction into that. The wonderful world of Indian it's food. so good. Oh, that's like, God. yeah, that's my number one reason why I don't want to go. Because I'd have to leave the Indian food. <laughs> I mean, they might be able to deliver these days, you know. To the U.S.? Yeah, you know, I mean, you <laughs> yeah, know. It's a, it's a little Uber, Uber flights? Yeah, yeah, no, Uber I don't think flights, so. yeah. yeah. Oh, well. So the convention is over. I have left. Uh, I am now at the train station in Wolverhampton. I'm going to catch a train back to Bath. In order to do that, I have to change trains in Bristol. So that's cool. Um, I it, Surprisingly, this time it was easy because uh, one of the guys who runs the con, Craig, his brother happens to work at the train company. So he's like, let me help you out here. So he just like pulled up the app and he's like, do this, do that. He actually saved me a bunch of money too, which I really appreciated. So very cool. So I went through the first train ride. It was a little cramped, but ultimately worked. I am now in Bristol, uh, very temporarily, uh, which is a town, relatively big town outside of, you know, uh, it, kind of in between Cardiff and uh, Bath. Uh, I actually remember coming here years ago. I did a video with Sega where they had me work with a company called Yogscast, our YouTube channel, and we did this whole big thing for Shenmue, of course. Um, but yeah, we filmed it somewhere out there. But yeah, it's just kind of cool to be back for two seconds. Okay, I've never been to this place, but West Cornwall Pasty. I gotta say, this place smells amazing. There's a reason there's a line for it. It's so, that's ridiculous. Unfortunately, I already have dinner plans, but oof, that looks good. And I'm now back in Bath, our boss. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so a huge shout out to the con. Thank you very much for having me. Obviously, I have dinner plans and things like that. I'm gonna go do stuff, but uh, as for the convention itself, it was awesome. Huge shout out to Craig in particular, who was very keen on having me come out there. It was an awesome time. Thank you to everybody. Good afternoon. Uh, so big cut there, obviously. So I'm actually at Heathrow now. I've already gone through security and all that fun stuff. I'm heading over to my flight. Uh, it is time to go back home to Chicago. A uh, little crunched on time, so actually, even though there is a United Club Lounge here, and I showed you to you last time I was in the UK, I'm not going to have time to do that. So we're just going straight to the boarding. So very cool. I got upgraded to first class again. I'll take it. So they've upgraded the little toiletry pouches, which is kind of funny. These are from Wrexham AFC, which is some, you know, British football team or soccer, which I think is hilariously appropriate. Although I think it's a missed opportunity to have Manchester United. <laughs> okay. 
I am officially back home in Chicago. Well, to be fair, I still have to go through customs and all that. Flight was good. Uh, I was pretty much awake the entire time. I tried to doze off, but anyway, um, yeah, food was good. I the they had like an appetizer deal that was really very nice, and then the spare rib was the food. There was a breakfast service, but I just kind of turned it down because I was full. So whatever. Anyway, time to go deal with customs, which again, if you're an American, I highly recommend getting global entry because it just makes your life so much easier. Basically, just scan your face and welcome home. I am now at baggage claim. Uh, I went through global entry. I can't stress this enough. You don't even need the password anymore. It just scans your face and immediately welcome home. Uh, but yeah, so this will pretty much do it for this video, series of videos. It's been a lot of Britishness going on, uh, but it was a good trip with a lot of good things. Big shout out, of course, to uh, Revival Game Not Over for having me out there. It's always good to go back to the UK if I can. Um, but I'm exhausted, and I want to go home and go to sleep. So thank you guys, everybody, for watching. As always, if you guys please do me a favor, like the video, comment down below, subscribe if you haven't done it before. Check out all the social media stuff, description, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Discord, Patreon, Spreadshirt, Chapel Channel, etc. Appreciate the support. Thank you so much, and I'll see you all later.